Every day is for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. But ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, has reversed the role. It is now every day for the owner of the house. If you're involved in bribery, over-invoicing, or any shady deal, the day of reckoning has come. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching you. If you're reported for any corrupt practice, you'll be investigated, prosecuted, and punished. Corruption is harmful to our nation. Join the campaign against it by reporting any corrupt practice to ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let me join hands with ICPC, make up the time. Break the chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. To ensure the attainment of good governance and sustainable development, corruption and its scourge must be combated. Successive governments since the independence in Nigeria has had a series of anti-corruption policies, laws and programs. These efforts of the government have been complemented by civil society organizations to ensure transparency, accountability, and good governance. Welcome to Corruption Must Go, ICPC's Public Enlightenment and Education Program. I am your host, Murna Barnabas Atiai. On the program today, our focus is on the role of CSOs in the fight against corruption. But first, Ruth Awadi is standing by with anti-corruption stories. It's over to you, Ruth. Welcome to this segment on anti-corruption stories. I am Ruth Awudi. The chairman of ICPC, Professor Bolaji Owasonye, SANOFR, has charged chief executive officers, CEOs of public agencies to develop the confidence and courage not to indulge in corruption, even in the face of intimidation, to compromise their integrity while discharging their official duties. The chairman gave this charge during a two-day anti-corruption training for NORM and behavior change organized for chief executive officers of public agencies by the Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria, ACAN, the training arm of ICPC. Professor Owasoye noted that some of the excuses being given for indulging in corrupt practices were intimidation from external quarters. Well, it is one thing to expect is another thing for you to gratify that expectation wrongfully. Many people assume that our salaries are bigger than what it is. The perks of the office, the respect around the office, the fact that you are a decision maker, that's the only gratification you get. So if your chief or your traditional ruler or somebody or your extended family, the only way to go is to tell them the truth. Where do you think this money is going to come from? Do you know how much my salary is? Say, ah, oh God, but you are driving the cheap. But it's not mine. It's government. The day I leave the office, you drop the car. It's not mine. It's government property. Big office. It's not my office. It's government property. So we need to learn. It's the only way we can start it with our own personal examples. But if we roll along, as soon as you get the appointment, then you take a chief agency along with it and all that, and you, you divert the money from your office for the chief agency, then you take a title in your church or your mosque and all that. Well, okay, your problem is waiting for you. Earlier in his welcome address, the provost of the Anti-Corruption Academy, Professor Olatunde Babawale, stated that the training was organized in furtherance of the corruption prevention mandate of the ICPC in helping to build capacity in other aspects of the fight against corruption. The provost of the academy hoped that the participants would leave with more heightened awareness of issues 
and principles that will strengthen their capacity to initiate and implement corruption prevention arrangements in their agencies. And from the Kaduna State Office comes a report that ICPC and EFCC have agreed to increase the existing collaboration between the two agencies in the area of intelligence sharing and coordination. This agreement was reached recently when the head of the EFCC Kaduna Zonal Office, Aisha Bubakar, paid a courtesy visit to the ICPC State Office in Kaduna. Welcoming the visitors, the ICPC Kaduna State Resident Anti-Corruption Commissioner, Prince Hassan Mohammed, said there was need for the two agencies to sustain the existing collaboration which would assist both agencies in achieving greater results and help in the fight against corruption in the state and the country at large. Also speaking at the event, Aisha Abubakar appreciated the existing relationship that the two agencies enjoyed and commended ISPC for its efforts in the fight against corruption in the state, adding that EFCC would unavoidably collaborate with ICPC in the area of intelligence sharing and coordination. The EFCC zonal head was accompanied by the heads of various departments and units. That will be all of this segment. Corruption Must Go continues with Mona. Stay with us. Welcome back. Just like the media, civil society organizations are the third sector of the society, distinct from government and business. The role of CSOs includes service provision, advocacy, campaigns, watchdog over government, building active citizenship and participation in governance processes. CSOs play important roles in the fight against corruption as they can demand accountability and transparency from the public and private sectors. Most importantly, 
They bridge the development gap in society and push states to act against corruption. They also advocate for reforms that can bring about fiscal responsibility in government business. Let's hear from members of some CSOs on how they campaign for accountability and amplified fight against corruption. In order to help in the reduction of um, corruption, some would say eradication, but we'll start with reduction first. We have a radio program, which is um, Public Conscience on Radio, which we air in Abuja here, live production on 99.9 Kiss FM, where we amplify investigative corruption-related reports. So what we do is we partner with other media organizations and some investigative journalists after they have done their research and published their story, Aside from publication of the story, we take it to the radio. And you know the radio has the capacity to reach a large audience. We amplify in Abuja here, we write to relevant government um, agencies, especially those that have been indicted in that report, and also other government agencies that have to take action, that is ICPC, and in some cases the EFCC or Code of Conduct Review, to say XYZ has been committed, what have you done? So we, aside from sensitizing the citizens on radio and getting the relevant government agencies to act on that particular case, we syndicate that particular program to other radio stations. We've been to Lagos, we've been to, um, currently we are at Para, uh, Maloney FM in Para State. We are also um, on Albaca, sorry, Albaca FM in Para State and Maloney FM in Kefi and also Hot FM in Abuja here. So we syndicate our content to reach a larger audience. And there's also a live production on, um, we stream live on Facebook, so that if you're unable to listen to us on radio, you have the opportunity to get the meat of the discussion via social media. And aside from the campaign on anti-corruption, that's the public conscience on radio, we also interact with citizens on a one-on-one -on -one basis where we have a town hall meeting. So we take our campaigns to communities and reach uh, where we reach some of the community members on particular corruption cases that has to do with them. Another thing we do is we amplify integrity. So you know corruption is the flip side of integrity. So, so aside from amplifying corruption cases, we also get persons of integrity which we partner with other CSO like um, Accountability Lab Nigeria to bring persons of integrity in the public sector and also in the private sector to amplify their cases. So what we do is we give hope to citizens to say, we know you have heard lots of corruption cases. There are also individuals out there who are living above board. We use them as heroes or icons to tell Nigerians that you're not alone in that challenge that you're facing. Maybe there's a corruption case in your office and you feel, how do I deal with it? If X person can deal with it and is living above board, that means I too can also do, deal with it. Wish to blow it is the duty of every Nigerian. The Nigeria constitution has enshrined every Nigerian to be a wish to blow by the constitution itself. Also, but people are afraid to come out to give uh, informations on corruptions for fear of being reprisal or whatever and so we started preaching the message come out give information not will happen to you when you give information on corruption you'll be protected the government has a robust policy domicile in the ministry of finance um, supported by the articulation agency the icpc the EFS code of conduct to protect whoever that give information on corruption. From um, our perspective, the yes. organization itself is set up as a communication for change center. Yes. Yes. So it means that what we try to do is use things like entertainment, skits, um, use advocacy drama messages as we call them now to engender change. So how can, and you know Nigerians, so Nigerians are more um, affected by things that they see, mm -hmm. you know, either, so we can be using soft issues, talking about very serious issues, but using um, very easy to understand mediums like dramas. So we have many different actors come and join us on our Corruption Not In My Country advocacy campaigns, and they speak to the issue. So for example, we can be talking about NEPA um, and the corrupt practices of people, you know, cutting wires. And then we bring people in and yeah. we're like, okay, you know, these are people you know, um, but they would be passing the message of, so what we try to do again is behavioral change and norm setting. So how can you and me actually stand against corruption in those spaces? So those are the strategies, at least that's one of our major strategies. One of our key programs that we're working on is the Integrity Icon Project, where we identify and recognize individuals of integrity 
across different organizations that are doing their best to ensure that they short the practices. And we have seen that this actually happens because if you ask an average Nigeria what corruption is, corruption has been personified enough for us to know that. So we are trying to see how we can create a counter effect for that as well as an organization. So the integrity icon campaign will have actually been helpful because now people can understand that you can be a person of integrity and still succeed in the field of work, especially in the public service. Currently, we are looking at setting up what we call an integrity hub and we are trying to see how we can create a partnership with the ICDC as well as for the other team, although that has not been concluded yet. But we are hoping that we can set up an integrity hub that can serve as a catalyst within the public service space and ensure that this council action and measures can be taken. And the other thing that we've done recently is uh, demystified and broke down the national ethics and integrity policy, which we shared to different NGOs sometime last year. Currently, I am working on a policy brief that we're going to use to engage the government as soon as they get into office, just so that they can begin to actually embody this now that there's going to be a transition government. And one of the ways that we're doing this is also issuing out uh, flyers to those people who have the CDC and reintroducing and reiterating what the NGO stands for, because we actually believe that it's a good uh, policy. Another thing that we've worked on this in terms of campaign is to see how we can open the procurement landscape and ensure that that part of governance is actually very transparent and works for, for people. Uh, we believe that the best part of government should work to the best interest of citizens. So that, that said, we know that value for money should come back into governance, that, uh, for services of governance to be able to work for the people. If you're just tuning in, this is Corruption Must Go, and our focus is still on the role of CSOs in the fight against corruption. Addressing corruption requires both action and partnership with a wide array of actors, including those in government, the media, civil society, communities, and consumers. Therefore, as part of ICPC's effort to strengthen the fight against corruption, the Commission has over the years partnered with CSOs to drive transparency and accountability in the country. The Commission has continued to collaborate with legally recognized CSOs, focusing on real-time impacts and results, especially as it relates to national development and diminishing corruption. We spoke with Mrs. Ese Oko, an assistant director in the Public Enlightenment and Education Department of ICPC, who also is in charge of partnerships with CSOs. Take a listen. If an NGO is interested in being a member of the National Anti-Corruption Coalition, all the NGO needs to do is to contact us and say, okay, I want to be a member. And then we will ask you to fill a form. We have the registration form. It is on the ICPC's website, www.icpc.gov.ng. You can download the form in, on the website and fill the forms and submit. You can come to our office at the headquarters and we'll give, you the hard, we'll give you the hard copy of the form. You can also go to any of our state offices and pick the form. The form, when you fill the form, you'll be required to fill some information like what are your activities, what are the members of trustees of the NGO, what do you do? Um, what's your anti-corruption drive? Is that the objective you have? What have you done in that regard? Those are things that you would be required to fill. Then when you submit the form, we'll carry out an appraisal and then we'll find out, is, it, is this NGO, do they appear serious? And then to further ascertain your claims, we want to know if they are for real, we'll carry out what we call a vetting exercise. Most times the NGOs won't even be allowed to know. Just just show up at your doorstep and then we we'll walk in and find out do you, do you actually have staff on ground? The claims you've made that you've carried out so many activities, anti corruption activities, are they for real? You go to verify these claims before eventually you will now be issued a letter of registration. The fight against corruption is a collective action. As you have heard from our guests, 
civil society, complement government's efforts. Many of them work with the Commission and other government anti-corruption agencies. They play the role of advocacy, whistleblowing, public education, among others. Their role in the society cannot be underestimated. Fellow Nigerians, do you know that constituency projects are actually your projects? Do you know that constituency projects are funded by the federal government? Do you know that you can track release of constituency project funds for projects located in your constituency and follow up to know how they have been executed? Constituency projects happen because government does not want to leave any community out in development efforts. You have a responsibility to know what constituency project has been planned for your community, how much has been allocated for it, and whether value for money has been delivered. Take ownership of constituency projects located in your community. Protect them because they belong to you. Government knows about your needs and is planning for you. Government needs your help to ensure quality delivery. Know that constituency projects are actually your projects. Protect your constituency project. My constituency, my project. For information on funds allocated to projects in your constituency, call 0800-2255-4272. This message is from the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission and the National Orientation Agency. That's our package on today's edition. You can watch episodes of Corruption Must Go on our YouTube and follow us on our social media platforms showing on your screen. See you again next week. I am Murna Barnabas Atiyahi.